you focus. All right, click the links to join channel. Come be valued, member. Join the subscribe star, Odyssey, Bitch, You, Gab, Telegram. So, uh, do I was going to say a secret cabal. Do I do a secret powerful cabal of NGO globalists control the the world? Well, um, Rothschild's Reuters says fact checks that and says no. Because it's it's not secret, it's pretty much just open control of the world. So politics is downstream from culture. So uh, what happened? Amazon backed media report pressures Indian film television companies to push diversity, inclusion, uh, compi- co- compassion, and kindness. Politics is downstream from culture. NGOs, these these vermin parasites, these are the worst people on earth. As people are slowly starting to awaken to that real to that reality of. Um, Oh, we actually kind of are in a, a matrix. Um, they know this. They have already destroyed America and Canada. And if you think that's a gross exaggeration, please look around you. As I'll explain in about five minutes. So now they're looking to destroy India. First, diversity is cancer. Diversity, inclusion, equity are the uh, Moses, Mordecai, Levy, Saul, Alinsky, Frankfurt School, Marxist tenets of their propaganda. It's always diversity for you, but not for them because they're Bolshevik parasites. It's, you know, open open doors for you, but they live in gated communities. And, and no Second Amendment for you, but they have armed guards. And uh, they want to um, defund your police department, which probably means uh, no taxes for, for your police services. But they can simply, if, if they're in a wealthy community, hire their own armed private security Seems like um, th- everything on the left just gets subverted by these wealthy, uh, wealthy folks, these globalist Bolshevik vermin. So Amazon, Amazon knows all this. Um, there's no more powerful tool of Marxist propaganda than video. Allowing powerful global NGOs to entirely control the media was a fatal mistake for the West, as people are learning. How do you get trans kids? It seems like. Seems like you know, you try to show the stuff that people are seeing now, like children on stage um, dancing around for dollar bills in clubs. It's like, oh, that's all literally happening right now. If you was that the, the you know the World War Two meme where the guys getting off the boat and the the image uh, the image of present day. It's like they were they would have they would have killed their commanding officers gone back to America and had a revolution. It's like if they only could have envisioned what what that um, what the consequences would have been. Um, and I'll, I'll stop right there. Um, media is obviously very, very powerful. I only say that because look around at trans kids and drag queen story hour. How do you think you get that without decades of media? Oh, you mean we've been brainwashing? Brainwashed this whole time? There are children dancing on stage for dollar bills. Yes, I think it's a fair assumption to say there are, are, are drag queen story hours. Yes, look around. Yes, that's brainwashing. That's re- Oh, oh, you mean like 50 years of globalist media propaganda actually had an end goal. I mean, it, it, like being subjected to brainwashing and we actually got brainwashed. Yeah, of course. That was the point of brainwashing. Um, the whole time, and and really, in 1963, there's this whole theory about they kicked it into gear by um, changing TV programming from like nationalist patriarchal based programming to um, like Bewitched and I Dream of Jeannie, moving it from like the male patriarchy to uh, female agency. Um, and it's like, well, 60 years later, what do you get? Oh, you get children dancing on stage. Is this Weimar? You know, it, it actually looks quite a bit like Weimar. If you look at CRT and what um, what this is being taught in schools and what this was in libraries, it's like, yeah, that looks remarkably like a period of history that um, the world has gone through. Anyway, so yeah, you get you get all this stuff by brainwashing sheep for fifty years. If people don't have a core dogma that resists globalist subversion and corruption, then eventually they'll be enslaved by it, and they don't secretly control the world. Schwab, Soros, Rothschilds. BlackRock, Vanguard, the WEF, the GPPP, they're not hiding. They meet openly because, honestly, they know that if they did hide, then that would get people even more upset. So they just openly meet and talk about <laughs> they talk about how people have too much freedom <laughs> and how these uh, these these banker companies, bankers and, and big tech financial companies actually are better suited at ruling these nations than the elected representatives. Gee, it's weird that Antifa and BLM don't talk about that group of people 
They went from Occupy Wall Street to being funded by Soros, Chase Bank, and Bank of America. That's pretty much the definition of subversion and corruption. This isn't, I mean, really, like, you look at that, there's like the left-wing groups, Antifa, Black Buck, Black, and you look at like, oh, yeah, Occupy Wall Street, what happened? Oh, um, our representatives at Chase Bank now fund us, so they're paying for the van and the foods and the snacks. So, yeah, but 15 years ago, they that was the end. Of, yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't really talk about that anymore. So now we're going after, like, the white middle class plumber in Idaho who, who you know, he made $103,000 last year, um, you know, welding pipes under people's homes. So he's actually the enemy of the people now. Because, you know, it seems like that, that plumber and the school teacher and the um, the electrician, it seems like those are the people. And um, Antifa working for Chase Bank and Soros are, are the enemy of us, we the people. It, it seems like you got completely subverted from, from class war into uh, into race war right about somewhere in the 90s. Anyway, um, so this isn't just about Amazon controlling the propaganda in uh, India. They do it all over the world. They turn what used to be nations into economic zones controlled by bankers and big tech. You don't run America. They do. And, you know, I can only say this on this platform because it has a, it's such a small channel. If this channel had, it was a bigger channel, like, you notice big channels don't talk like this because they wouldn't be on YouTube for long if they talk like this. There's no, there's no channel with, you know, a six figure channel that is, would say this kind of stuff because they just wouldn't be on YouTube for long. So they take what used to be nations, they turned them into these commercial zones controlled by bankers and big tech. You don't run America, they do. You weren't voting the way they wanted, so they uh, uh, brought in um, new uh, people who would follow orders and vote exactly the way that the magic TV and tablet told them to do. Too much free thinking is not good for NGOs, and uh, is probably istophobic also. The globalists in Hollywood set the rules for Marxist propaganda. They run 99% of media. Their tests for diversity, inclusion, and equity are Marxist values. Their values designed to destroy nations. If your values are different or your nation's values are different, and uh, you don't literally keep um, these big tech companies out of your home and out of your nation, they'll brainwash your people and destroy them. These people are thinking... In, in in thousands of years, if it took from the 1960s to completely subvert America via TV to now, it's like, yeah, that there's a 60 year time period. But um, pretty much um, that's, you know, that's what it took. It's like, oh, yeah, it really wasn't that long. It was like 60 years of propaganda on the TV that completely turned America into this dystopian nightmare you see before you. You don't think it's weird that Disney, one of the biggest media propaganda companies in the world, is getting involved in politics? When is Disney going to demand a congressional and Senate seat? And when will Amazon and when will all the other big tech companies or the banks? And you think I'm joking, the GPPP, a Soros group, if I remember correctly, and if it's not Soros, it's either Schwab, Rothschilds, Vanguard, or BlackRock, who's, oh, they're not directly funding them. So you look at the direct fundraiser, the direct source of income, and then you look one step above them, you're all, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I don't know, an XYZ company owned, a wholly owned subsidiary of Rothschilds Incorporated. Oh, okay, well, so, but it's not direct. Yeah, but they control the purse strings. So they're working on doing exactly that. Openly saying that the banker CEOs of big tech are better suited to run countries because what is good for Zuckerberg is good for its uh, shareholders. People are replaceable, fungible voters. They can always get new voters to vote their desires. You are nothing more than dead slave cattle to them. Movies are ideas in a entertaining package and something like six companies control the majority of the dissemination of those ideas yeah obviously politics is downstream from culture and two companies control 90 percent of the digital app footprint google and apple those two companies set the terms of service and obviously back in my day and probably your day too you downloaded apps from websites you virus scanned them you spyware scanned them you malware scanned them and then you installed them yourself. And, you know, back in the day, people were doing much, much more on computers uh, than they are doing now. Computers kind of run themselves now 
when they before when they, in the nineties was an entirely different competing environment. Even up until about two thousand fifteen, it was a, a different competing environment. You can't have a computer uh, a Twitter alternative because Google and Apple set the rules. The reason only Gab has free political spree- speech is because it's not allowed on the App Store, and I don't think they even bother applying. Everything on the App Store is controlled. It might be um, openly, um, it's 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 controlled one way or the other. Uh, even if you think it's, um, I won't get into. It. Um, so no, there's no such thing as, as hate speech, but there is speech that your globalist puppet masters hate. Trump won in 2016 with the help of hundreds of in quotes alt right YouTube channels. All those channels are banned by Google now. Google, Facebook, Twitter, and the payment processors literally control the elections. Everyone who helped Trump is banned and blacklisted. If uh, we the people don't control big tech and force free speech, then we don't control the company and are slaves to Google. Free speech is meaningless if it doesn't apply digitally. Twitter and Google is the new town square. If we don't have equal space in the open marketplace of ideas, then we're slaves to big tech who does control it. If free expression is an American value, then obviously it has to apply digitally or it's meaningless. We want to elect candidates. We don't want them pre-selected by Google, Facebook. This isn't Alex Jones tinfoil hat. This is all actually happening right now. Big tech literally controls elections. Alex Jones got banned and blacklisted for helping Trump in 2016. Stop and think for a moment. Every single alt-right channel that helped Trump got banned and blacklisted from Google and many banking and financial services. People who um, let's get in frame here. People who work for those channels suddenly found themselves um, debanked. Like, oh, it didn't. I, you're on a you're on the same list as a terrorist no fly list because you 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 supported a you supported the wrong candidate for office. Oh, that seems like a real slippery slope to go, to go down. I'm sure our elected representatives, the 535 people um, on the East Coast, will do some. Oh no, they're not doing anything about it at all, at all. Other than oh, they they did vote themselves a raise last year, so now they're getting paid three hundred thousand dollars a year, and their health care is, is covered. But it's good. It seems like the representatives aren't. What do you do with a country when the representatives openly don't represent you? Uh, ballot box soap. Box. Anyway, it's not a free country if NGOs have more power than the government, and the government won't protect your rights. We the people don't run America. Big tech and the bankers do. The people wanted Trump. They supported those alt-right YouTube channels. And no, the interests of a billion-dollar big tech company or bankers uh, are not more important than the interests of uh, an ordered republic and we the people. That was the will of the people, so Google blacklisted those channels and uh, Biden was placed in office. Maybe Google and big tech shouldn't have that much power. If you're running for office and Twitter and Google blacklist you and the thousands of channels that support you, then you're not getting elected. This isn't hyperbolic. We just saw it in 2020. Google and Twitter blacklisted thousands of big channels that supported Trump. They literally control elections right now. We're already down the rabbit hole. This is the dystopian nightmare. Big Tech put Biden in office, an 80-year-old dementia patient ruled by hostile foreign powers. It's all actually happening, and the YouTube channels that would talk about it all got blacklisted. Google and Big Tech and, and these other financial companies and payment processors, they run America, and they're working on running the world. Big Tech, the media, and the banks openly determine elections, but we still have bread and circuses, and we're not starving yet, so we don't force our representatives to do anything or, you know, peaceful and legal and constitutionally protected activities, replace our representatives, and that's all I meant by that, um, with representatives who will represent our interests. Our, uh, our representatives, like $140 million, Nancy Pelosi, who, who represent our interests, we the people, we the little people, the... You know, the, the hairdresser making who made $115,000 last year in the Bay Area or or the, you know, $140 million Nancy Pelosi. It's uh, $140 million. You know, actually, there's quite a few representatives who are in the $100 million club. Even uh, Feinstein, $87 million. This $140 million Nancy Pelosi. If 
Feinstein, eighty-seven million dollars. Wait a minute, that, that I'm not worth one hundred and forty million dollars. You're not worth anything, Bianca. I know, but most people. It seems weird that our representatives are worth one hundred and forty. Oh well, her husband, Nancy Pelosi's husband, um, does a lot of stock trading. But Nancy Pelosi has access to insider financial information. That seems like a breach, breach of her fiduciary duty of due care to act in good faith and fair dealing to her representatives. But she's worth a hundred and oh well, her husband made the trades. But she's in office right now. She's worth a hundred and forty million. It seems like isn't she the third uh, in line of succession? It seems like it's weird that that's not more of an issue for um, anyone at all, at all. Anyway, support me on Subscribestar if you can with a two dollar donation. Join the Subscribestar. Uh, join the I won't say it. Our um, Telegram, Gab, Odyssey, Bitchute, and I will see you guys all next episode.